Hello everyone. Today, doing another book review. This is for Pala Deepika. Uh, this is a book by Mantraswar. This is, a, as you can see, a unique classic on Hindu predictive astrology. Um, this book was really the first kind of Brihat Parashra Hora Shastra, from what I understand, or I guess Brihat Chitaka would probably be that. But this was, uh, for most people who did, um, did, did Vedic astrology like in the 70s or in the 80s before Brihat Parashra was recompiled or found or whatever, before it just showed up on the scene, this was kind of like your main book as well as Brihat Chitaka. Um, so I wanted to talk about this one a little bit. You might be able to get it cheaper and it's a great book. It gives you a lot of good insights, a lot of good basics. I mean, I can see I've underlined a lot of stuff in here. It's like most texts, uh, and like I said, you want to read several of them to really get a good feel for things. So this would be another good one to have. Um, yeah, you know, it starts out like most texts. Um, with talking about the you know the houses, the planets, the signs, these basic things, and uh, basic characteristics of the planets. Then it has um, goes into various kinds of strengths. You know, uh, goes into the Vargas a little bit, but not, not as much as others. Um, then you get to source of livelihood. This was a good chapter for me. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of good techniques in there. I still use. You know, classic yoga chapter. Uh, you know, right here is going over the Mahapurusha yogas, it seems, yeah. Um, the Chaka yoga. Um, you know, like you might, it's not, you might already have this information in other texts, but I like this book. I think it's a good one. I found it to work well. Um, little chapter on planet effects of planets in different houses. Um, Seventh whole chapter on seventh house stuff. Whole chapter on female horoscopy. That's very interesting because then you almost think, wait, so is all horoscopy meant just for men? No, that's not the case. But these are just particular yogas um, that help. They kind of help to see like um, particular feminine matters, like being a child, and then when it comes to like. Uh, dating women or marrying you know they did arrange marriages in these in these days and uh, if you wanted to know you know how that was going to go if the woman was lying if she was a cheat if she was pure in heart uh, if she was a harlot whatever you know so there's some sort of yogas dealing with that um, it also that's also the chapter that people have you can kind of like, there's some stuff in there in that chapter that's a little bit medieval sounding, but you can extrapolate that and put it in a modern context and it works really amazingly and I do that. And a lot of, uh, I'm not the only one who does that, there's a lot of people who do and it works really, really well um, when it comes to compatibility techniques and stuff. So there are techniques in here that I still use for compatibility. Um, there's a whole chapter on the birth of children. Of course, that's one of the hardest things there is to predict. So. You know, good luck with that if you're trying to do that. Um, chapter on longevity, which is pretty classic. Most texts have that. Um, there's some other interesting chapters too, like like exits from the world, diseases, death, past and future births, um, assessment of houses. Well, that's kind of normal. Um, and. Yeah, this is an interesting thing right here. Um, has a chapter effects of dosses of the lords of houses and their antar dosses. So that's pretty fun. Um, sometimes we don't really have a lot of information to go off with that, so that's good. And then there's this one chapter that I really like about transits, and that's what I'm trying to find right here. Um, has a chapter on Kala Chakra Dasha at the end. I'm not really a very. I'm not. I don't really know a lot about Kala Chakra myself. I haven't in depth studied that. Has a chapter at the end on Ashtika Varga. A lot of people are into that. Um, 
It's a little chapter on Upagrahas. Yeah, effects of transits, chapter 26 in here. Effects of transits of the various planets and constellations. Um, this is a good chapter. This is a great one for the, a lot of the stuff in here. If you just kind of like get the read through it and get the ideas and the principles, you'll find them to still be working out in your practice in modern day things. So that's really neat. This is a super old medieval text. Um, and then yeah, at the end, it has a little chapter on yoga is leading to asceticism, which I think is kind of neat because I always like want to know why people do that. Um, for example, when the Lord of the Tenth House, in association with four planets, is posited in a Kendra or Tricona, the native attains emancipation. I can't really say that that's true, in my opinion. Um, I, I haven't looked into this that much, but uh, I just read that because that was the first thing that I was saying. But I don't really know if I would say that that's that true. Well, I mean, you got to always test out the stuff that you read in here because the, these texts are, and this goes for all. Uh, Vedic texts or at least all the astrology texts they work in extremes they deal in extremes so that you get to know like just the feel and what the thing does so they right off the bat say you're either gonna be a king with this placement or you're gonna die in a ditch at you know 15 years old with that uh, opposite placement you know there's no middle ground thing you're supposed to kind of understand that and and understand that in real life there's mostly averages and things are going to be more average but this, these are just to give you the principles of what's good what's bad you know what i mean but you have to kind of always be figuring this stuff out on your own you know and learning it and testing it so anyways that's paula de pica it's you know i'm not going to say like five out of five stars but it's a very good text i'm not going to give it an actual thing it's a great text if we didn't have Brihat Prash or Horst Shastra, we would all be reading this so much more. Or if we didn't have some of the other texts, we would all be reading this so much more. But um, it's sort of not been talked about as much in recent years. But you know, if you talk to older astrologers who were doing Vedic astrology in the 70s, this is one of the only books you had. And I really liked it. I, I, I was, it was one of the first books that I read when I was young. I remember getting off home from work and reading this. Um, as the sun was going down and just really starting to click, starting to make a lot of connections in my mind earlier on. Um, but I can't say that it's like uh, a must have or that it's, you know, absolutely profound. You have to have this book, but it's a good one. Cool. So if anyone, um, if you have any other books that you want me to review and, and if I have read it, then I will do that, but let me know if so, but it's okay if not. Thanks, you guys. Oh.